Like, son, I have a dojo. Fatality. Hello, welcome. Welcome back to this week's episode of Wake Up 3. This is round 31. And we are your hosts, Molly. And Cam. And we are a fighting game podcast from a couple who loves fighting games. And we are coming at you from 2024, our first episode of the new year. Welcome to a new year of Wake Up 3. And hope hope you all are having a good 2024 so far. Hope you've been pressing some buttons. Have you been pressing buttons, Cam? I have been. I feel like I've been probably pressing fewer buttons than I'd like for for my fighting games. Um I've been playing I've been playing a little bit less fighters over the last week. I know that sounds crazy. But I've been back on that Elden Ring vibe. <laughs> Not something you probably had in your cards. I know, right? What game what fighter, since we are a fighting games? podcast here um what fighter did you start the new year off with i was playing mortal kombat 1 to ring in the new year i had started at about 11 p.m and i played for like four hours straight so i rang in the new year with mk1 online nice i guess that's you know that seems expected i think that ended up being my first fighter of the year too so let's since it's the new year and we've got kind of a fresh slate ahead of us what are your predictions for yourself for the your year in fighting games do you see yourself playing the most hours wise mk has always been my main franchise so i see myself playing that more than anything else other than that i definitely want to check out tekken when it launches in a couple of weeks and when akuma hits as well i'm gonna be playing a lot of street fighter so Man, I don't know. That doesn't answer your question at all. Well, you predicted MK, so... Yeah, okay, fair enough. Guess we're going with that. Let's go with that. I am excited, though. Might be close, though. It might be a year where all these titles are kind of neck and neck. We started a tradition with this podcast in 2023, and that is our mix-up. And you have that today. Yes. Here. Yes, we are going to stick with the mix-up. And I wanted to talk about Capcom Cup Japan. Mm -hmm. Because that happened this past week, and it was an online event. I wanted to play a little guessing game with you for the new year. Okay. I know you like to guess. I do like to guess. In the top 16, there were nine different characters that were represented. Okay. I wanted to see if you could guess them. Okay. I'm going to go with definitely Ken. Yep, there were three Kens. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, let's go also with Luke. There were two Lukes, so you're up to five already. All right. Uh, JP. Yes, there were two JPs, so you're up to seven. All right. Pretty solid. How about Cammy? There were three Cammies. That was the only other character that had three, so it was Ken and Cammy at the top for, as far as representation. And now you're up to 10 of 16. You're killing so it. So good. So good. Okay. Hmm. You've got five more characters to go. Hmm. 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 Let's go with Chun-Li. No. No Chun-Li? No Chun-Li. Okay. That's your first strike. Oops. My bad. Let's go with uh... Guile. No guile. <laughs> I'm going to start for two. Oh, no. <laughs> Ryu. No Ryu's. That's Damn strike it. three. Okay. There were two DJs, and then there was one Marisa, one Jury, one Honda, and one Kimberly. Mm. That would have been tough to guess, I think. I think so. A um, little bit of a variety yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Yeah. So there was a fair amount of character representation at this event, all the way up to the top 16, really, with nine characters making mm-hmm. it that far. I hope you liked that mix-up to start the new year. Yeah, I it's fun. I to, to talk about the events every once in a while. I think it's fun. Who was the winner? Ken? Kawano beat Otani, Luke versus Kami. Okay. So, yeah. Cool, congrats. 
Congratulations there. Yeah, Luke went all the way there, so pretty cool. Pretty tough. Top five? I don't know. Lately, I've been hearing these days that Ken isn't top five. <laughs> so. Yeah. I guess anything's possible. Now, this year, 2024, is the year of the dragon. And I wanted to kind of ring that in by talking about the original dragon, Bruce Lee. One of his nicknames was actually the dragon or little dragon, among many other things. But I thought little dragon was fun. Why little dragon? That was something that they called him on set in Hong Kong when he first started playing or started acting, I guess. So they just called him little dragon back then. One of his other names was little phoenix which is kind of interesting as well. Dragon, Little Dragon, among others, he had many nicknames. Bruce Lee is very influential throughout the years. He's, I mean, he's a pop culture icon. I'm sure everybody knows who Bruce Lee is. He's a martial artist. He's an actor. He helped popularize the entire genre of just martial arts, kung fu, action movies in the West. In addition to that, he also created his own fighting style, based on a combination of many other things he had already learned throughout the years, called Jeet Kune Do. And he worked later in his life to try to popularize that style, and there are people that still learn it and use it today. It's a defensive style, and the name means the way of the intercepting fist. It's supposed to be kind of a way to disarm people and use their weight against them, use quick strikes. A lot of the things that Bruce Lee was known for in his action movies were things like nunchucks, flying kicks, the one-inch punch. Those are a lot of things that you've seen in fighting games, I'm sure, from a lot of different franchises. And the first one I wanted to talk about was not the first one that was ever in a fighting game, but I wanted to start with Fei Long because I feel like he looks the closest to Bruce Lee. Hmm. He was in Super Street Fighter 2, the one that came out in 1994, so it was one of the later iterations. At this point, there were already a few others, like Liu Kang. But I feel like he looks... He looks the part for sure. He looks just out of... Uh, he looks like he's straight out of Enter the Dragon. He's got a lot of the moves. He uses the very high pitch kung fu sounds, you know what I mean? A couple of things about Fei Long. In the Street Fighter universe, he's a Chinese action movie star who enters the World Warriors Tournament in order to test his skills as a martial artist. So he's actually a movie star as well. So this man is basically, I would say from his character bio standpoint, a direct copy of Bruce Lee, right? Pretty much, yeah. And unlike another action movie star in another franchise, Johnny Cage, (laughs) he is a very serious character. He takes himself seriously, he takes pride in what he does, and his goal is to bring honor to his fighting style, which is not called the same thing, it's his own thing. But anyways, he's a very serious character, he takes pride in what he does. He uses the one-inch punch, the flying kick, and flurries of rapid punches, and with all of those, he uses those Bruce Lee sound effects. Fei Long has been shown to have nunchucks in various pieces of art or endings but he's never used them in gameplay he's been back he was in one of the alpha games he was in alpha 3 and then he was in street fighter 4 as well that's it for the mainline games a couple of other things about him i wanted to go through his likes and dislikes because anytime i find those i love it he likes kung fu self-discipline and self-assertiveness he dislikes lethargy apathy indifference faithless people and the shot alone. The name Fei Long is actually Chinese for flying dragon. Okay. So, I thought that was kind of cool. I had no idea. Hmm. You learn something new when you listen to Wake Up 3. A little bit more trivia about Fei Long. His best friend is DJ, and one of Fei Long's movies in the Street Fighter universe also stars Yoon and Yang, and it's called Street Kings 2, Three Dragons. Hmm. Add it to my watch list. <laughs> That's all I've got about Fei Long. I thought he was pretty cool. Our next dragon is Liu Kang. A staple of the Mortal Kombat franchise. He's been around since the original 1992 game. Appearance-wise, he doesn't really look 
like Bruce Lee because he has long shoulder length hair. But he does have the signature pants. He uses the nunchucks in a couple of the games, more of the modern games, but he did use them in the 3D era as well. One of the things you might think of when you think of Liu Kang are those high-pitched shrieks that he does when he does his flying kick, his fireballs, bicycle kicks, all of that. That's once again that famed Bruce Lee noise. So he's got that. He's always had that as a character. Also, Liu Kang turns into a dragon in some of his fatalities. He started doing that in Mortal Kombat 2, turning into a dragon and eating his opponent. They've brought that back a couple times, as recent as MK11 in The Fatal Blow. So, yeah, he's also a dragon, you could say. And in the last few Mortal Kombat games, I think starting with MKX, he even does the signature nose brush with his thumb that Bruce Lee was often known to do in a lot of his features. Liu Kang has been a lot of things in his vast history. He's been Earthrealm's champion. He's been killed by the Deadly Alliance and turned into a zombie. He's been killed a different time and brought back as a revenant servant for Quan Chi. He's been a fire god. And most recently, he's been the keeper of time and creator of the current MK timeline. So Liu Kang has often been a central part of the MK story. Yeah, appearance-wise, he doesn't necessarily have the full look, but he does take a lot of inspiration for his moves, namely the flying kick. Next up, I've got Martial and Forest Law. Martial Law is the original Tekken Bruce Lee stand-in. He showed up in the very first game. He's been around in every single game, aside from three, where Forrest took his place for one game. They both look pretty much identical to Bruce Lee, and actually, as of the later games, Law has scratch marks across his chest. I think they're from Kuma in the Tekken lore, but that was something that Bruce Lee had in Enter the Dragon when he fights that guy with the claws at the end. So, another homage. Bruce Lee also had a son that followed in his footsteps, performing martial arts and acting. So that's another thing that Forrest had in common. We miss martial law for that game, and we get Forrest as an adult. They're never really in the same games except for the tag games. Oh, I only play Forrest. Weird. Okay, what about his identical dad? Martial and Forrest Law both use the Jeet Kune Do style pretty much to its fullest extent, and they also do the exaggerated shrieks that come along with that. Martial Law is nicknamed the Legendary Dragon in Tekken 8, and he's, been, he's had variations of that throughout the history, but they, they always change the nickname game by game. Right now, it's the Legendary Dragon. In Tekken 8, he's also got a gold dragon running down the side of his pant leg. Martial Law uses nunchucks in Tekken 8 for the very first time. He's never used those before, but they show that he uses them in heat mode. That's pretty cool. Something new. Some fun facts about Martial Law. At various points in the Tekken series, he's been a dojo owner and a restaurant owner, but he's lost both of those due to various mishaps. He likes his restaurant, his dojo, money, his wife and son, fishing, his best friend Paul Phoenix, Steve Fox, and Yoshimitsu. That's a lot of likes. That's a weird array of likes. Isn't in my it? Opinion. Money, Yoshimitsu, Steve Fox? Paul Phoenix? That's his best friend. Paul Phoenix is his best friend. Hmm. Martial law dislikes bills, being broke, rich people, when his son Forrest gets in fights outside the dojo. And Bake Dusan, that is the predecessor of Hua Rang, dislikes him because he was responsible for one of the mishaps. With his son? No. Oh, with his businesses. With his businesses, yes. Okay. So. Well, I think his dislikes are mostly relatable. Yeah, makes sense. Wouldn't want my son getting into fights outside of the dojo. Like, son, I have a dojo. I have a dojo. Right, in right in here. Exactly. I can officiate. Exactly. I can bend the rules for you. You know. <laughs> Being broke. Yeah. I think that I would say, to me, he's the most like direct copy of Bruce Lee. He is. It's everything that you know about Bruce Lee and then ramped up to 11. Mm-hmm. They, they mm-hmm. want to just make him the most Bruce Lee that he can be. And I feel like you got to respect it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. The recognizability without it being like, hey, this is Bruce Lee. Yeah. It's pretty great. 10 out of 10. 
Yeah. Strong. Yeah. One other thing about not necessarily martial law. This is actually about Paul Phoenix. Paul Phoenix is loosely based on Chuck Norris, which I bring Mm. up because Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris were friends and sparring partners in real life. It's probably why they were best friends in the game. Yeah. Just another little tie in. Yeah. So just a fun fact there. The next dragon that I've got to tell you about here is Kim Dragon. This is a character that we've seen before in a fighting game, but it's been a very long time. A long time ago, one of the old games we picked up on Super Nintendo was World Heroes 2, and I do want to talk about Kim Dragon. They're from the World Heroes series, starting with the very first game. He looks just like Bruce Lee, and he uses the flying kicks, the flurry punches. I'm pretty sure he uses a one-inch punch. And he debuted in 1992 before Liu Kang, like six months prior. So he's actually the very first Bruce Lee clone, and that's why I wanted to include him. Hmm. He does have a couple of likes, all martial arts, his own voice, and duels. And he dislikes guns. I get it. Don't run into Aaron Black now. I know, right? (laughs) He's a martial artist, actor, and singer. That's why he likes his own voice. (laughs) Okay. I thought it was kind of cool that he was a singer, because while I was looking up Bruce Lee facts, I found out that Bruce Lee's father was a professional opera singer, and after Bruce Lee passed, his younger brother wrote and sang an album in 1974 titled The Ballad of Bruce Lee. Wow. So That's interesting. He's got some singers in his family, and I thought it was pretty cool that the very first Bruce Lee clone in a fighting game included that part in his history. That's cool. Yeah. So that is... Kim Dragon. All right. And the final dragon that I wanted to talk about is less of a dragon, I guess you could say. It's Jackie Bryant from the Virtua Fighter series. This is kind of weird, I know. Jackie Bryant is a white dude with spiky blonde hair and blue eyes. His nickname is Blue Flash, even though he wears mostly red. He's obsessed with speed and is a race car driver. He's kind of brash. He's a little punk. And he cares about protecting his sister more than anything else. What does this have to do with Bruce Lee, you might be wondering. You're looking at me like... I'm wondering very much, yes. Well, he uses Jeet Kune Do as well. Probably more so than anyone else, including Law, because he uses a direct version of it, not super flashy. So he doesn't use like the flashed out version that Law uses. Even though he's known as Blue Flash. Right. That's mostly his race car persona, because he drives a blue car. Okay. But... Yeah, he uses Jeet Kune Do directly. He's an instructor of Jeet Kune Do in the Virtua Fighter universe. So he takes it pretty seriously. So he he kind of just takes the teachings of Bruce Lee and just applies them directly in his life. And that's how he is influenced by Bruce. So he's pretty cool, I guess you could say, in that regard. If for some reason you're interested in Jackie Bryant, but you don't like fighting games... First off, why are you listening to this podcast? And second, he's also a playable character in a racing game called Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, where he drives the red convertible from OutRun. That's another Sega racing game. So you could race as Jackie Bryant. Yeah. Yay. In June of 1994, there was a movie that came out called Dragon, the Bruce Lee Story. And along with that... That was an era where there were a lot of video game tie-ins. And this movie got several different video game tie-ins. It it got it on handhelds like the Game Gear. And it also got Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis ports. So Dragon the Bruce Lee Story is a fighting game. A one-on-one fighter where you play as actually Bruce Lee. It's pretty simple in terms of what you can do. And it's probably not honestly worth your time playing it's it's worth looking up because it's kind of goofy but yeah this is what the this is what it looked like in terms of graphics you fight weird dominatrixes and all sorts of various 90s tropes i guess you could say and you also fight three different clones that are all named bruce lee just with lee spelled differently Mm. so just a way to do palette swaps kind of like the mk ninjas i guess but Yeah, if you want to check out a Bruce Lee fighting game where you could play as multiple Bruce Lees, there you go. Who would you say is the best executed version? Who's the best Bruce Lee clone in fighting Mm -hmm. games? Let's go with... Well, my vote's going to be martial law, I think. Yeah. 
What about you? I would say that too. As far as like complete execution, Liu Kang's pretty good because he's got all of those influences and yet, like you said, he's still crafted as kind of like his own yeah, person true. with his own like identity. Style and the influence is absolutely there. The dragon is literally there. So A I guess there's that going for Liu Kang. One fun fact that I found while looking at like old school Liu Kang stuff from mm-hmm. when he was first being created, originally they wanted him to be kind of a traditional monk with a shaved head, mm-hmm. but the actor didn't want to shave his head, cut his hair, Thank God. any of that. So Thank God. because of that, we still have the long haired Liu Kang of today. So that was cool. Well, but, yeah, so there are, there are quite a few options if you're looking to play as Bruce Lee or as close to a Bruce Lee character as you possibly can, you've got a lot of options. Mm-hmm. And it being the year of the dragon does kind of bode well for Mortal Kombat in general, or we would hope it would. I mean, Mortal Kombat itself is the very first game was largely based on Enter the Dragon mm-hmm. from the tournament to the vaguely implied mysticism and the character with the claw weapon which Shang never had then, but he's got now. So that's something. Mm -hmm. Something to consider, I guess. Well, thanks for being here for our first episode of the year. And we hope that you had fun and learned something new about fighting games. Or Bruce Lee. Or Bruce Lee. Or both. Or both, yeah. Or Paul Phoenix. Or Steve Fox. Or Yoshimitsu. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird that uh, you could you could kind of ask what what do these three characters have in common? Yoshimitsu, Steve Fox, Paul Phoenix. And the answer is they're all martial law's best friends. <laughs> Likes. <laughs> yeah. And we'll be back next week with a special guest. Look forward to it. Fight on. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Wake Up Three. You can follow along on Twitter at WakeUp3FGC or on YouTube and Spotify at WakeUp3. I'm your host, Cam, and you can find me at Big Ruck Online on all social media. And I'm your host, Molly, and you can find me on Twitter at ConCut, that's K-A-H-N-K-U-T, or on PlayStation, that's Jam Michaels. This is WakeUp3 signing off. Bye. Capcom Comp. Cap- Capcom. <laughs> Capcom Comp. <laughs> God.